to the Story Palace. This story is called I Bought a Moose for Granny. Written by Jan Payne with illustrations by Tony Payne. Narrated by Tamsin Heatley. This story is by Annie Fidgen, aged eight. Chapter One. When the wildlife park near us closed down and they sold off all the animals, I bought a moose for Granny. I called him Tickle. Gran tried hard not to show it, but she was really pleased I could tell. She put Tickle in the cupboard underneath the stairs at first, but he didn't really fit, so we gave him her spare room. He liked it in there, but he ate a rubber plant and the handles of a chest of drawers, so Granny said he had to go out in the garden. I don't think pets should have to go out in the cold and wet. It's not fair. Anyway, Granny asked if I'd walk the moose for her, as her legs are not what they were. But I'm much too busy to walk a moose. And Gran has lots of time when she's not making jam or anything. I think she's just being lazy. Also, I think her legs are what they were, because I've looked, and they're the same. Granny took the moose down to the post office to get her pension and to the supermarket for some tara masalata. But they wouldn't let her in, so she had to tie Tickle to a tree outside. When she came out, the moose had pulled up the tree and run away. There were bits of tree all up the high street, but no sign of Tickle. Gran pretended to be glad, to save my feelings, I expect, skipping about and flapping her arms and yodelling as she swung round in the store's revolving doors. But she didn't fool me. She was really sad. I could tell. Chapter 2 I went back to the wildlife park to get something else to cheer her up, but they didn't have much left. I really wanted an Australian wombat, but they'd run out. Pity. I like wombats. In the end, I got a giant tortoise and a pangolin, which isn't a musical instrument, by the way. It's an animal. It looks like a big fur cone with a long nose. <laughs> I reckon the tortoise and the pangolin together made up one moose worth. Granny put on her pretend exasperation expression look when I gave them to her and rolled her eyes the way grannies do. The giant tortoise was all right, but he didn't have a lot of energy. Once he'd eaten everything green in the garden, finishing with the rhubarb, which, OK, is mainly pink. He didn't move again for a week. Actually, he was a bit boring, really. The pangolin was sweet, though, and had a lot of personality, except he stuck his tongue in your ear and wiggled it about. Gran sent me to the library in the high street to look up what they have for dinner. Where am I going to find enough ants in Sebastopol Street? she asked when I got back. Quite loudly, actually. She must have been really interested. I went to the park to get a kilo of ants, but they wouldn't stay in the bag. I bought some back on the outside of the bag and all up my arms, but most of them stayed on the bus when I got off. There weren't really enough ants left for a proper lunch then, and I had to give the pangolin my smarties. Chapter 3 the next day, I met Jessica Jolly, who lives in the same road as me. She'd been to the wildlife park sale too and bought stuff. We did a swap. My pangolin for her Komodo dragon. Her mum is allergic to Komodo dragons, she said. I took him back to Gran's on a lead. I don't think he's a real dragon. He didn't breathe out smoke, or fly, anything. But he's really lovely and fits perfectly in the bath. Except for his tail. And his head. And his legs which stick out over the sides. Jessica said Komodo dragons only seem to eat once a month. So Gran has plenty of time to find out what he likes. Gran was really pleased with me and my kindness. I could tell. But then the Komodo dragon disappeared. 
he must have been able to fly after all, because the window was open and the bathroom is at the top of the house. He couldn't have jumped. He left something smelly in the bath too. Excrement, Granny said it was. But I think it was poo. She said she couldn't take much more of this. Excitement, I suppose she meant. Chapter 4 The giant tortoise was no trouble, except that she was a bit drab and people kept tripping over her. I decided to brighten her up with some paint I found in the cupboard at home. It didn't actually mention tortoises on the tin, but I'm pretty sure it was all right. There's no poison lead in it or anything. I painted each bump on her shell with a different pattern. Flowers and zigzags and stripes and other stuff and all in different colours. She looked really nice. Just like a patchwork quilt, Jessica Jolly said. Whatever that is. Now the tortoise was so colourful she brightened up the whole garden and no one tripped over her. But she still didn't do much. In fact, whenever I saw her shell, I wondered if there was anyone in. She must have thumped about when I wasn't looking though because she bashed a hole in the fence and went next door. It hardly seemed worth the effort of getting her back again because she was just as interesting on the other side of the fence. And anyway, old Mr Kravitz has bad eyesight and thought the bright colours were his chrysanthemums. Chapter 5 I went to the wildlife park yet again. It was so disappointing. The shelves were empty and the man in the office said almost everything had gone. Only small animals were left, he said. Well, I didn't want my gift to Granny to be less than a moose or a Komodo dragon, so I guessed what a moose would weigh and asked the man if I could have a ton of mixed small animals. He just laughed and said he didn't have that many and I would have to make do with three and a half kilos. Well, you don't get many animals for three and a half kilos, that's for sure. Not a moose worth anyway. I think they were about two dozen animals altogether. He said the one that looked like a lizard was a comedian, which I thought was good because Granny likes a joke. But then the man told me it was a chameleon and he wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. The new animals loved it at Granny's, but I had to put them in different rooms so they didn't eat each other. It was getting really nice and interesting in the house. It was a bit whiffy though and Gran stayed in the kitchen all the time with a bottle of her homemade sherry. To celebrate probably. She was always asking where the chameleon was. Once I told her I thought it was in disguise on the curtains in the front room. Gran said that was silly. She said the chameleon might be good at changing colour but it didn't do chintz. I think that was a funny remark but I didn't understand it. Gran said that old Mr Kravitz next door had had the council round telling him off for leaving his patchwork quilt in the garden. Poor Mr Kravitz. I had a look and they didn't know what they were talking about. There wasn't anything in his garden, except the tortoise I'd painted, of course. Chapter 6 Then Granny had some really good luck. She went to put some sheets in the airing cupboard and the Komodo dragon fell out on top of her. It had been there in the warm all the time. The day after that, the giant tortoise returned from next door because she'd run out of chrysanthemums to eat. And then Tickle turned up in the middle of the night with another moose friend he'd found somewhere. If that wasn't good enough news, Jessica Jolly bought the pangolin back. Her mother was allergic to pangolins too. Also, she didn't like pangolin spit in her ear. Gran wasn't home next morning when I called in on my way to school. There was a note from her saying she'd gone away for an emergency holiday to Australia. Granny can't fool me. <laughs> she hadn't gone to Australia for an emergency holiday at all. 
She wants to pay me back for all my thoughtfulness, I can tell. Granny's gone to get me a wombat! 